Dear students, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to tell you about gas like electrostatics. So, why have we named it as uh, electrostatics means in magnetism also we can find one gas law. But right now let us discuss the gas law in electrostatics. You know that electrostatics is the branch of physics which mainly deals with the charges and its properties when they are at rest. Okay, fine. If you come to the statement of gas law, gas is the name of a person who introduces this law. If you come to the statement of this gas law, it says that the total electrical flux through any closed surface in free space is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the net charge or total charge enclosed by the surface. Like that, so gas law has given his statement. Gauss, Mr. Gas given his statement. So, what is electric flux? We know that. The total number of electric field lines passing normally through a given surface in the eye is said to be electrical flux. It mainly deals with the total amount of electrical flux which is passing through a closed surface. That too in free space. See, we take a look. The statement says the total electrical flux through any closed surface in free space is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the net charge enclosed by the surface. See here the total electrical flux through any closed surface. I will tell you why I am underlining this later. Next free space and finally the net charge enclosed by the surface. So these three words are very significant. How means? See as per the statement if we consider a closed surface here, any closed surface means this gas law is independent of shape and size of the closed surface we have selected. That's why I have underlined it. Next, here I will place few charges plus Q1, minus Q2, plus Q3 inside the surface, plus Q4 and minus Q5 outside the surface. Okay, now this gas law, what it says? We have to consider the total flux passing through that closed surface when you place it in free space. Suppose this closed surface is in free, free space. Now, according to this statement, the total flux is equal to the total electrical flux through such a closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times. You know what? Epsilon naught times. Epsilon naught means absolute permittivity. Since I am using free space here, I have used 1 over epsilon naught times the net charge. Net charge, otherwise total charge enclosed by the surface. It means we have to consider the net charge as the, the charges which are present inside the closed surface. Only those charges we have to consider. Here the net charge is what? Plus Q1 plus Q3 minus Q2. Otherwise, plus Q1 minus Q2 plus Q3 is the net charge. The charges present outside the surface should not be taken into account. Okay, therefore, right now it becomes 1 over epsilon naught times the net charge means Q1 minus Q2 plus Q3. This is the total charge enclosed by this closed surface. So, this is the gas line electrostatics. First thing, any closed surface. We can apply this gas law for a closed surface of any shape and any size. Second one, free space. It purely depends on the value of flux, purely depends on the nature of the medium we have selected. See, it is only for either air or vacuum. In other media, what happens? In other media, the gas law will take the form phi is equal to 1 over epsilon or 
epsilon times the net charge otherwise phi is equal to 1 over epsilon naught epsilon naught times the net charge and it was by the surface like this we can modify this gauss law what is the statement of gauss law says the statement of gauss law says that the total electrical flux through any closed surface in free space is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the net charge or total charge enclosed by this closed surface here 1 over epsilon naught anta adru karibodu otherwise 1 over what absolute permittivity times the net charge enclosed by the surface anta adru helibodu net charge anta antadu ondu olle varutte compared to the total charge okay fine Uh, moreover, when we compare this uh, Gauss law with Coulomb's law, Coulomb's law uh, was applicable only for static charges. Whereas we can apply this Gauss law even for moving charges. This Gauss law is applicable for both static charges as well as moving charges. Please remember. So only three factors will affect the value of electrical flux here. First one, what? the nature of the medium we have selected the amount of charge net charge present inside that surface only two things will affect surface okay fine suppose what happens to the electrical flux passing through uh, such a surface when i increase the uh, size of this ga gaussian surface otherwise a closed surface any closed surface which is helpful to put the gas line is called gaussian surface and the okay when the uh, what the size of the gaussian surface increases what happens to the electrical flux please remember electrical flux remains same because we are not changing the charges present inside the closed surface only we are increasing the size that's why electrical flux depends only on the nature of the medium we have selected and the amount of net charge present inside that closed surface like that okay na okay fine next let us come to the proof of gauss law i will give you the proof whether this equation is correct or not which is that phi is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the net charge sometimes it can also be called as see phi is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the net charge q this is also gauss law okay na okay. it will be asked for two marks very important question gauss state and explain gauss law in electrostatics okay fine next let us come to the proof of gauss law let's do the gauss law they may ask this question for three mark also state and prove the gauss law in electrostatics okay proof of gauss law in electrostatics okay fine in order to prove this gauss law finally what i have to show phi is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the capital q that equation i have to i have to be uh, i have to show that equation for that what i will do i will consider a charge point charge plus q for example at some point o in free space in here are vacuum free space okay fine next the concept of electric intensity or electric field says that the direction of electric field due to this positive point charge is outwards is it it okay next the concept of gauss law the statement of gauss law what it uh, it says the statement of gauss law says the total electrical flux through any closed surface we have to imagine a closed surface that's why so how does a point charge looks like a point charge looks like spherical therefore i have imagined one spherical surface it is not circle we have to imagine it as a sphere and i will name this as gaussian sphere or it is gaussian surface okay fine it is having a radius of some small r okay 
Now, the direction of electric field will be outwards. It doesn't mean that the electric field is along only the x-axis. Simultaneously, you can expect the electric field along y-axis, electric field along z-axis, etc. Therefore, so we can expect the electrical flux to pass in all possible direction. But it is impossible to find the total electrical flux through this entire Gaussian sphere at a time. Therefore, so it is our formality. What we will do that, we will do means, we will imagine a small portion of this surface. I mean a sphere, Gaussian sphere, whose area is delta A, whose direction is along the electric intensity direction because we know that it is a normal one. Hmm? It is always normal to the surface. Now, we will write the free space here. We know that the total electrical flux through sorry, the small electrical flux flux through the small area delta A is hmm, the amount of flux passing through this small delta A E, small area delta A E is delta phi is equal to E delta A cos theta. What is the angle between E and delta A here? That is 0. Therefore, it becomes E delta A cos 0. What is the value of cos 0? Cos 0 is 1. Therefore, simply it will become E into delta A. This is the small electrical flux through the small area delta A. But we want the total electrical flux. Therefore, the total electrical flux through the entire Gaussian sphere of area, that is surface area. How much area, surface area of a sphere? 4 pi r square is, we can take the summation, phi is equal to delta, so summation of delta phi, which is equal to E into summation of delta A. Next, E. What is the value of E? Electric intensity at this point due to this point positive charge. It is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q divided by r square. And what is the summation of this delta A? That is capital A. What is capital A? Total surface area of the sphere which is 4 pi r square. Next what we do? We cancel 4 pi 4 pi and r square r square. What is the thing remaining here is 1 over epsilon naught times capital Q. This is the Gauss law. This is Gauss law. Like this, you can uh, give a proof for Gauss law. What I have done? I have just obeyed what the statement of Gauss law said. See, I have imagined one point to positive charge inside a Gaussian sphere. Actually, first I have put that positive charge and later on I have put that area. Okay, no problem. Inside this Gaussian sphere, there is a point positive charge plus Q. Due to that plus Q, the direction of electric field is outwards. So, it is possible in all the directions, that is along y axis, z axis, etc. Therefore, I have taken only, I am concentrating only on the x axis. Therefore, the direction of electric field is outwards. Now, at some distance smaller, which is also called as the radius of this sphere, I have imagined one small portion of this Gaussian sphere, which is also a spherical one. Okay. Its area vector is along the electric field vector. Therefore, according to the formality, we know that the small electrical flux through this small area is given by delta phi. Therefore, total flux is given by just to phi, like that. Delta phi, the small electrical flux through this small area is given by E delta A 
cos theta that is the definition of electrical flux next the angle between delta a and the electric field is zero because they are parallel therefore cos zero cos zero is equal to 1 next up delta phi is equal to e into delta a next we have just calculated the small electrical flux through a small portion of this uh, entire Gaussian sphere. Okay, now it is our duty to find the total electrical flux through this entire Gaussian sphere, which is obtained by the summation. Okay, fine. The total electrical flux through the entire Gaussian sphere of surface area 4 pi r square is given by phi is equal to summation of delta phi. In place of delta phi, I will take E outside and I will take only the delta A. Delta A, if we add the small, small areas of all these small portions, totally we get capital A, which is equal to 4 pi R square. Therefore, simultaneously, I have wrote the expression for electric intensity, which I have derived in the last class, that is electric intensity due to a point to positive charge, which is 1 over epsilon, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q divided by r square. I have cancelled 4 pi, 4 pi and r square, r square. Finally, phi is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the net charge, that is capital Q. So, and this is called gas. Okay. So, in your theory examination, you can also get one uh, numerical problem for one mark, uh, which may be like this. Find the total electrical flux through a closed surface or any boundary containing a charge of plus 1 coulomb. Otherwise, what is the total electrical flux through a closed surface containing a unit positive charge? Like this, if you get uh, a question means, we have to answer like this. Phi is equal to, according to Gauss law, phi is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times capital Q. Okay, this is 1 over epsilon naught times Q is plus 1 coulomb. So, neglect it. What is the value of epsilon naught? If you know this, good. So, epsilon naught is 8.854 into 10 power minus 12. Suppose sometimes, so you can't remember the value of epsilon naught means, you can also write like this. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught into 4 pi. Like that, you can modify this. What is the value of 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught? That is 9 into 10 power 9 into 4. Pi value is 22 divided by 7. Like that. On solving this, you get 1 1 1 into 10 power 9. That is Newton per coulomb meter square. This is the total electrical flux through a closed surface containing a charge of plus 1 coulomb. Ok, have you got it? Ok, anyhow, thanks for watching. In my next video, I am going to tell you about the uh, verification of Gauss Just now we have proved the Gauss Similarly, state and verify the Gauss law like that uh, question you can get for again 3 marks. Okay, anyhow, thanks for watching.